This podcast is brought to you by School Device Coverage, the number one insurer of school devices in America. To learn more, visit schooldevicecoverage.com. Hi, welcome to Risky Business. I'm Kathy Kaler. And I'm Bliss Landon. Welcome to our show. Yes. We're very peppy. Must be our shakes. (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling you, it is. It's those shakes. Kale and spinach just wah. Yeah. And all the good stuff that we put in it. I mean, I do feel a a sense of energy. Of energy. energy. Uh, You know, my level has gone up, especially in the morning. So um, that is good. Masseur, who I saw yesterday. Yeah. I haven't seen him in for sure over a month and he, I was telling him about it and uh, he said, your eyes are very clear. Wow. Wow. Well, that's cool. We will continue with our shake conversation. I'm a a few days behind you, so I'm waiting to catch up. (laughs) Your eyes are clear. I got my eyes clear. Okay. That's good news. That is good news. But no, I'm enjoying my shake and I Mm -hmm. just feel really good about it. And, and my husband's getting used to it too. So we'll keep up with those green and they are green. They are green. And I'm like hoping I don't turn green, but, (laughs) (laughs) but the. They taste it's good. It's okay. It's yes. okay. I got to add lemon. That's my next step. Yes. I'm going to add lemon. lemon. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, this is this topic that we are going to be talking about today with an expert is something that I have been, oh, again, you talk about it all the time. Extremely interested, curious, worried, um, just trying to find things to read and get more informed about it. I've bought some things. I do some things. So um, the topic that we're going to talk about is is really this EMF. And you may know instantly what that means, but uh, we wanted to bring in somebody who is super well-versed and an expert in this, an author. Um, So we want to... uh, not waste any more time no. and bring on Daniel Debon. He's an engineer, co-founder, and CEO of Defender Shield. Uh, welcome to our little show here. Melissa and Kathy, thank you so much for inviting me. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to chatting about electromagnetic radiation with you guys and help people understand what it really is and what it's not. What well, you should be worried about and what you should not be worried about. And that's, that's what we <laughs> that's need to very know. very good. I'm glad there's some things we don't have to worry about because yes. I'm, you know, part of ignorance is bliss, right? That's the same. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the more, the more you know, the more you're responsible for, right? But right. I think this is a very important topic. So tell us how you got into this field. What, what you know, got you started into this? Probably 10 years ago or so. Um, My adult sons were visiting at our home in Florida, Mm -hmm. and um, they were using their laptops on their laps. My wife looked at it after several hours and said, that can't be good for you. I want grandchildren, she said. Mm -hmm. Well, for for me, um, I had been in the telecommunications industry for 30 years. I developed standards in the uh, telecom industry. I tested technology in the industry. So I was pretty familiar. And I said to my wife, there's no way that can bother you. There's no way that can disrupt the cells of the body. The power levels are too low. And then I thought about it a tiny bit, and I began looking into some of the research that was going on at that time. This is over 10 years ago. And I found after about three or four hours, 25% of the male sperm was immobile. Okay, wait a second. I found, wait, wait a second. Say that one more time. 25%. So 25% of-, of the male sperm count after three to four hours can immobilize the sperm from a laptop on a lap. From having your laptop sitting on your lap. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And believe it or not, women, uh, something like 2% of women um, who have uh, their laptops close to the soft tissue of the body can actually have mutated cells that could actually, uh, and some small portion of that 2% can become cancerous. 
That's 10 years ago we knew that. Mm -hmm. And ironically, as I said, I used to write the standards for the Bell system, and I did not know that. Wow. And so no one else does either. And so that's when I began in the industry. And I said, well, we're not, um, we're not victims. Let me design something to help you. So if you do want your laptop on your lap, at least the signal is not going to pass through and into the uh, in, and interfere with your sperm count. So and literally, that that was the start. Is yeah. it is it mainly the um, the wireless uh, connected connection that's that's doing? It's not your actual laptop. If it's off, is there anything happening? So it, it is the wireless component. The RF, the radio frequency Wi-Fi signal that's going from your laptop to your router. That's an RF signal. Um, when you power up your laptop, um, there's power being used by all the electronics inside. That's also generating an emissions, extremely low frequency electromagnetic radiation. But predominantly what you should be most concerned about is the radio frequency stuff, the RF that's associated with cell phones, with laptops, with tablets. Um, those are the sort of the stuff, if you think about it, 10 years ago, it didn't really exist in our local environments. Our, our rooms weren't filled with all of these devices. Right. And all of a sudden, it's all around us everywhere. Your cell phone has a laptop transmitter. Your cell phone has a uh, I mean, uh, your laptop has a Wi-Fi wi transmitter mm -hmm. and your laptop has a Bluetooth transmitter. You can have all three transmitters turned on, RF transmitters, that is emanating out of your device and hitting your body, as well as connecting to the Wi-Fi or the cell tower, whatever it is. So what is an RF signal? I like to sort of help people understand. When you take a piece of meat and you put it in a microwave oven, and you turn the microwave oven on, the heat is turning up the temperature of the water between the cells. The cells oscillate as a result of that, and voila, you have cooked meat. Well, a microwave signal is a RF signal. They're one and the same. The difference is a microwave oven is a thousand watts, a cell phone is one and a half watts, roughly. Hmm. So even though it's much, much less, it's a microwave signal on your head. If it's a cell phone, if it's in your in your lap, it, it's to the soft tissue of your body. Well, and you're also only using the microwave for what? Three minutes, five minutes, 10 right. minutes max? 30 seconds. And yeah. you've got the cell phone on your head for how many hours? Yeah. If, you, if you have it on your head, but mostly it's in our hands. Right. Yeah, th think about that. And in, in fact, 30 years ago or so, the standard was developed by, by the Federal Communications Commission. It, it it took a six foot male and it it modeled that six foot male and said, how strong shall a cell phone signal be so it doesn't hurt the male? And so they came up with, well, for this six foot male, we can't let the signal be more than 1.6 watts per kilogram. It's just a number, 1.6. And we know at 1.6, that six foot male will experience two degrees increase in that area of the head because it's a microwave signal. And it will go in one to two inches into this, the head of the, of the male. That was 30 years ago. The standards haven't changed since that time. And if you think about it, it represents about 3% of the population. I was going to say, most men are not six feet tall. Right. right. Yeah. Most men are thick skulled at six foot. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and uh, women aren't. They're physically different. Well, children aren't. Oh my God. A child. So I said two inches for a six foot male. It goes right through the head of a six year old child. Oh, my God. Difference. Standards are probably not where they should be for us right now. Wow. Um, 
Okay, I understand now how we're going to probably jump around because these are just bringing <laughs> questions. Yeah. So when we're talking now about the frequency, obviously there's changes in the intensity of these frequencies and what we're all seeing across every billboard and, and commercial of the 5G taking over the United States. Oh. 5G is everywhere. It's going to prove your life and prove your work. Is right. it going to kill us? <laughs> Oh, wonderful question. So up to 4G, um, let me first explain this. A cell phone is about one gigahertz, mm -hmm. one billion cycles per second. Um, if you look at an ocean and a wave and you put a pole inside right where the waves are passing and that wave goes by, after one second, one cycle is a hertz. So okay. when I say a gigahertz, I'm talking about a billion of those going past in one second. Okay. So the speed has for 4G and below has been roughly one gigahertz. A Wi-Fi is 2.6 gigahertz. So it's like twice as fast. Um, a uh, and they can be five gigahertz as well. So, but most of the stuff we talk about in four G space is below ten gigahertz, ten billion cycles or less. Um, a lot of the stuff you hear about five G on the billboards when you drive by, five G is available. Well, what that really is is stuff below ten gigahertz. It's stuff we already know about, we already know a lot from science and research about the concerns to our body. Um, and so there's a lot of the same for most of 5G that's out there right now. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I heard, that it's kind of the same thing that we've already had. Yeah, going. it's the same yeah. stuff, you yeah. know, and, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. Uh, science suggests there's more concerns the more you use it, as we were talking before. But the big issue about 5G is there's another side of 5G where they're going after very, very faster speeds to handle more and more data volume. And that's the millimeter you may have heard about. The millimeter wave can be 23 billion cycles per second, 23 gigahertz, to up to 300 gigahertz. Mm. That kind of stuff is the small cell site uh, that is going to be really literally right in front of your house. Well, I was going to say, these things, don't they have to be put in at a much uh, closer range? Yes. You know, in other words, like you could be in your neighborhood and every three or four houses, there's going, is it a tower? Is it a, is it a pole that now has- Every 750 feet, that's because that signal can't go any farther than 750 feet, there'll be a tower. So it serves that uh, neighborhood. And those signals are uh, not only faster, but the power levels are much more. When I talk about 1.6 watts per kilogram, that's the power, basically the power of the signal. Um, for a cell site, a small cell site that's in front of your home, they have to be at least 60 watts to 100 watts every 750 feet. Wow. I have a question. Do you do you know about fiber? Because they're trying I'm to- I'm very familiar with fiber. So is, is fiber a better option or- Of course it is. It is. Okay. So what fiber is, is a piece of glass that's wrapped around a coaxial cable and it, it's in the center, you send light. So when you talk about fiber optics, it's a light passing through glass. And there's no emissions, very, very high speeds, and can be deployed anywhere in the world. Are, are those in the ground or are they yes, in the air? Yeah, typically. Typically, it's in the ground, believe it or not. They dig a hole and they put it in the ground and you don't even see it. Uh, so fiber optics is like, like the best stuff for communications today. And it's pervasive through the network. But this 5G stuff is much cheaper to deploy. Oh, so that's the difference is it's cheaper. Right. Okay. It's really like I can put a cell site there for a little bit of money 
and I can provide all the broadband services you need. That's why yeah. with 5G. So, so I went and described all this for very important reasons. We know nothing about the millimeter space. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about what its impact to the human will be. We don't know what the long-term impacts with exposures. Nobody knows anything because it's never been deployed in our environment. But shouldn't they test it first? Yeah. I mean, how, how do <laughs> they? <laughs> so, I guess right. They should right. Exactly. Should they test a lot of things first? Well, right. Yeah. But if they tested it ten years ago, why aren't they testing it now? It, it's interesting, actually. It's interesting you ask that question. There's a couple of things about that. Um, when we were in college together, as you may remember, we were protesting outside the the meeting room. And there was a guy with a gun that rather than shooting water at us, he shot a beam at us at 80 gigahertz okay. in war and in breaking up crews. They don't use water anymore. They use a 80 gigahertz signal. Wow. Mm. So what does an 80 gigahertz signal do to the body? Paralyzes. Well, we, have, we have no sweat glands. We have a bunch of sweat glands, right? And the sweat gland is helical coil. And that 80 gigahertz hits our sweat gland and we get really hot and we run. That's why we were running. We had, we were hot and we were running. Well, that's 90, 80 gigahertz. Wow. So we know something about some of the speeds we're talking about. But we certainly don't know much beyond that. Well, unfortunately. I was, I was going to say too, you know, when you're, when you're, when these are being installed in our communities, I mean, how dangerous. I grew up knowing you didn't want to live by the electrical, you know, yes. towers, right? That there was right. a mission from that. Now you've got something that is even more powerful, closer in proximity. You know, how sad for the person who's living right with the tower. Like, what it, is there research on that or? Um, and so um, when you have electrical cables over you, yeah, and the, particularly the very high power voltage level uh, wires, um, if you're within a thousand feet, you're three times more likely to get leukemia. A, a fact, a scientific fact. Within a thousand feet, you mean living underneath it? Where you're yeah, if you're within a thousand feet of that, you're three times more likely to to have a of uh, high po high powered high voltage, like yeah, an electrical plant, like high voltage stuff. The, the, the they these big um, metal things in the in the air that yeah, go yeah, really yeah. high. If with your if within a thousand feet, you're three times more likely to get cancer. So uh, wow. leukemia. If you're next to uh, a uh, a, uh, a cell phone tower, they transmit at 60 gigahertz. Uh, no, yeah, about 60 gigahertz. Um, if you're within a thousand foot of that, you're three times more likely to get cancer. Uh, there's been several studies that talk about those kinds of exposures. Um, and that is 60 watts per, of power, 60 watts, right? Well, the new cell site towers to be able to get 750 feet will be 60 watts to 100 watts wow. to be able to transmit the signal. So will it change our environment? Yes. Will it be a significant change? We don't know. We can only speculate that there may be more concerns, human body concerns. We know a lot about the lowest speeds. We already know there's direct links. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like for example, a few years ago, um, the Federal Communications Commission actually asked another part of the country's governance to evaluate a cell phone and its impact to the human. And they did an epidemiology study. The National Toxicity Program was created. $25 million was spent. And what they found out was after this 10-year period study with very, very, very large populations, which makes it statistically significant, uh, they found uh, statistically signi significant frontal lobe cancer and heart cancer. Mm -hmm. So that was reinforced with the Ramazani Institute, which is out of Italy. 
And they did the same similar epidemiology study, and they found similar kinds of um, um, kinds of results. So we we do know that up to four G, if you're not managing your own environment you're increasing the potential with this toxin within that environment that you maybe should understand better to protect yourself. So right. so let's talk about protection yeah. in, in ways <laughs> that we can, you know, let's just let's start with the cell phone. What okay. are some of your top tips on how to shield us from the, uh, the, 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 the waves? The, the... So if I take a cell phone and put it to my head, that's where there's the most potential dangers to the frontal lobe. Um, if I re- move that one to two foot away, 80% of that danger is gone. Wow. By okay. four foot away, 98% is gone. So in other words, distance is your friend okay. with RF signals. The farther away you are, the better off you are. Um, if you use it three minutes a day and that's all you use it, you're perfectly fine. So the time domain is very short. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't expect any sort of biological changes within the cell. If you use it for hours a day for 10 years, you're three times more likely to have frontal lobe cancer. So we know from research and science that heavy use of a cell phone can be dangerous to the body. So watch the time in which you spend on devices is the second thing you should be careful about. And uh, the third is uh, there are ways to shield those signals. So shielding is the third way. But you, 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 you can't forget that if it's not on, it can't hurt. Right. hurt you. Right. And so you want to think about it as like bees in the room. One bee um, won't kill you. A thousand will. Mm-hmm. If you had a thousand bees in that room, they would all potentially sting you and it would not be good for you. Well, it turns out that every transmitter can be thought about as a, 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 a bee. And all you got to do is turn it off. Like my my cell phone has a Wi-Fi, a Bluetooth, and a cell connection. If I don't use the Bluetooth, turn it off. If I don't use the Wi-Fi, turn it off. Right. Uh, if you have a laptop, um, you can use the Wi-Fi component to it, or you can get an Ethernet wire and plug it into the router and then put your laptop into the Ethernet cord, and you have no RF signal in the room. So you want to be thinking about where those bees are in the room. Mm -hmm. And if you can turn them off, turn them off. So speaking of router, where should our routers be? Like my router is in my bedroom. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Oh no. no, Oh, that's a double hand on the the head. You got to move that out. (laughs) No, 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 no. Okay. Let's talk about sanctuary. Okay. Um, RF disrupts the, the body. RF particularly disrupts um, melatonin. Yeah. So when you have a router in a room, you have disruptive sleep. Your circadian rhythm screwed up, your your uh, other biological infrastructure, the healing of the uh, of 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 the the cells themselves, the mitochondrial repair, all of the things you expect to happen at night is potentially being disrupted. So you router never, out ever want a router in a bedroom in fact you never ever want anything in a in 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 a bedroom even a cell phone um i have i was having a a conversation with a a, with a a beautiful a young lady a bright bright young lady and i was telling her that the bedroom's a sanctuary and it really disrupts everything you do at sleep so you want to make sure it's out of your room and she was being very polite. Oh, thank you so much for telling me that. She didn't believe a word I was saying. Two weeks later, she called me up and said, my husband and I are sleeping whole night through. And we took our cell phones out of the bedroom. Hmm. And so you don't realize that 
when you are in the presence of RF, it it, it really um, disrupts the immune system. It suppresses immune, believe it or not. And so, I mean, that goes from the head to the gut being disrupted as a result of that exposure. So you never want anything in the bedroom. Okay. You we, should put your router. Down. You Jeez. want your router in your garage. They go 2000 feet. You're going to get service. But by the time it gets inside your house, it's low enough where it's really much less disruptive. So this would be, this will be a question that my husband asked. Does that, does that uh, interfere with the speed? No, not at all. Okay. So you don't no, have to you're have recovering it close a by. signal at the other end, and if it recovers it, it recovers it, and most of the time it should. Particularly the new modern routers, they go two thousand feet. So and they okay, out of and the room. they, yeah, you do not want it in your room. You particularly don't want it in kids' room. A variant of that, by the way, is when we were talking before. I had my blue glasses on, blue light glasses on. Um. When, when when you're uh, reading at night, you're looking at your iPad and and you're reading all the stuff that's important to you, um, and then you decide to go to sleep, you may not go to sleep right away. Why? There's a protein in the back of your eye, the, the cryptochrome protein, that is the switch that turns on the micro uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, your, your melatonin. It literally turns on when it doesn't see light. When you're looking at a screen, the blue light is literally a high intensity light. And it's telling the switch, don't turn on yet because the light's still out. Mm -hmm. And this has been years and years and years of uh, evolution of our bodies. Yeah. And so the cryptochrome not being turned on means the melatonin is not being created and it takes time to build. And so that really disrupts a whole lot more than having a little bit of a problem going to sleep. Hmm. So you really, and by the way, blue light, modern screens have high LED uh, transmitters on there, uh, uh, blue component transmitters. And so you really want to watch what you do there because premature macular degeneration, hmm. dry eye. I, I was I was chatting with a, uh, with a, um, a, a clinic and he was telling me about one of the people working in his office who had dry eye for five years. And I asked him, what was the source? And, oh, we don't know, but we give drops and everything's perfect after that. And I said, I'm going to send you blue glasses, blue light glasses. And he said, well, go ahead. You know, I'm not sure what it's going to do. And he got him, put him on the person. Literally within two hours, her dry eye were wet. Wow. The red redness of the eye was reduced. Huh. It was the blue light in the monitor she was forced to look at all day that was influencing uh, that, uh, that that challenge in her own. Oh, yeah. Geez. Okay, so glasses can be a a prevention. Right. Router out of, the bedrooms, out of the bedroom in the garage mm -hmm. prevention. Mm -hmm. I purchased these little things that can you see this on the back of my phone? I do. Okay. Yes. Uh, it, legit or no? Um <laughs> Pause. <laughs> um, anything you look for, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that there's independent study okay. that substantiates the claim. Yes. I don't know what you have on there, but many of those kinds of things talk about science and physics I don't understand. Okay. Uh, and so as a consumer, you should be concerned that a claim is being made and it's appropriate to make. And the only way you really know that is, do they have independent study that substantiates the claim? There are things out there that in my opinion, just may not do exactly what they say it will do. And they use terms that are not scientific research terms. <laughs> so okay. you, you need to decide. So with your um, Defender Shield, tell us about that. The source was my sons. I, I wanted to shield my sons, right? Yeah, right. And so, and the problem was complicated. I've I've told you about the RF piece, mm -hmm. the extremely low frequency piece, mm -hmm. and in that ten years ago, heat, right? Heat was a problem, right? Uh, heat could burn your legs, literally, ten years ago. 
Right. So I had to create a, a shielding that actually dealt with all those kinds of concerns. And I actually developed, uh, uh, even though I did electrical engineering my whole career in the in the Bell system, mm -hmm. I, I, I was a mechanical engineer by trade. So for me, I, I sort of understood what the challenge was. And I created a shielding uh, that uh, protected uh, the user simply by um, putting the shielding in between the device and the user. And that's the basis of everything we do in Defender Shield. That's and what's what it do. made out of? Oh, uh, we use a, a bunch of very high exotic materials to do that. Hmm. It's a combination of many minerals and uh, uh, that each one of them have a characteristic that uh, that complements the others. And so it's an alloy. It's a mix alloy. Um, we have one aspect of it. It's like a sponge. Mm -hmm. If a lot of water, you want a big sponge to, because there's a lot of water going into the sponge. So the permeability of the materials need to be able to absorb the equivalent water content. Does it look like a case or is it just a, you just lay this down we, on we, your lap? We actually, it's a very thin, ultimately a very thin piece of material or multiple pieces of material that we embed into all of our products. Oh, okay. Um, and believe it or not, with 5G, um, all of that technology was out the window um, because 5G at, at 23 gigahertz, an X-ray is in the terahertz Spain. I mean, trillions, not billions, trillions of uh, uh, waves per, per second. And lead stops X-rays. Mm. But my stuff would never stop X-rays as lead won't stop RF. Mm -hmm. So you really have to know the mechanics of, of, of the fields you're dealing with to try to best shield those materials. Huh. How Are you optimistic um, of, the, of the safety and the future of, of technology? I think everyone should definitely be concerned you're the architect of your own destiny in this space mm -hmm. um the standards were 30 years old your six-year-old child using it five hours a day was never part of the standards and um and so um you should be cautious everyone should be cautious about up to this current technology the new technology because i don't know from a research science point of view, I would say you should continue and maybe even be more concerned because the power levels are different. Right. And we don't know what the impact will be. Think of this. Um, electricity hasn't been around the earth very long. And so our bodies are trying to figure out what to do. There's the, the earth generates a DC 12 hertz signal, roughly 12 hertz. And where our bodies got used to it and it doesn't affect us. It, it's sort of part of us, mm -hmm. but the body learned how to deal with it. Right. Like any toxin introduced in our environment, it takes time for the body to adopt. And it's really only prevalent over the last 10 years. Our body still hasn't adopted and trying to still figure out what to do with these exposures. 20% of you guys, women, no, 20% of the uh, population is electromagnetic hypersensitive. Oh. In other words, you get a headache. Your your skin hurts maybe a little bit. Uh, you feel tension and stress um, when you are exposed to this. Out of that 20%, 18% are women. Wow. Uh, that's statistical wow. significant. It, yeah. It's like women feel it more than men. Is it hormones? Is it, No one knows why, but it's a fact. Hmm. And these exposures are clearly increasing that uh, that trend. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, w w when I say be careful, it's because if you're not, it's typical for electric hypersensitive to get worse before they get better. Well, and I think to the, to the point of lifestyle is that this is no longer, um, like you said, a three minute microwave session. The, the, no. These are, these are 24 seven. You know, we deal with a lot of kids, especially yeah. with now that they're using school educational devices, you know, they've got the laptop, they've got the tablet, the right. whatever. Um, you know, 
and, and they're on them. That, very good point. And, I, and I'll give you an analogy for that. Remember when we went out and had a bunch of drinks the other day? You guys got a bottle of, of whiskey and I got a bottle of whiskey. I drank the whiskey right up and immediately after I finished it, I fell to the ground. You guys took your time. You took one shot at a time. But at the end of the night, you were right next to me. In other words, it takes time when you are exposed to that toxin. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it's the same thing. Same result. Yeah. Same Jeez. result. Mm -hmm. So you really do need to be aware of your environment. Where can we find your products? Uh, DefendersShield.com. DefendersShield.com. Um, okay. Yeah. And we also do it uh, on uh, on uh, Amazon and, and many other outlets. Okay. But what's more important about uh, DefendersShield.com is we have a whole section just on education. Oh, that's great. Uh, when, when, when you want to know a little bit about leukemia and associated with electromagnetic radiation, we actually have parts of our website that this describes um, the, the, the science. Fine. And so if you want to learn more about it, you can. Uh, we try to offer that. Oh, and in fact, great. a lot of what we did was try to educate. The reason we wrote Radiation Nation, my son and myself, was because I was really very, very frustrated. I was a lonely engineer, but I could tell the science community knew a lot and none of us knew it. Mm -hmm. It never got to the, the medical community, uh, but we knew a lot. Okay. We've known it from the 70s that there are potentially some dangers, but yet none of us knew. Hmm. Um, and so the reason we wrote Radiation Nation was because we, we just identified the research. We identified the things you could do. and um, knowledge um, is important in this case because it, it makes you, it helps you on make important and correct decisions. Absolutely. You don't panic. For example, when you talk about meters, these smart meters, everyone's panicking about a smart meter, like they're panicking about 5G. Smart meters are typically on a wall outside your house. Mm -hmm. And if it's on your garage and there's two car garage, you never, ever have to worry about that influencing your family. If it's on your bedroom wall on the outside, get out of the bedroom. If you can't, take the bed that's right close to it, move it around, put it on the side of the room, and you're much safer mm -hmm. simply by looking. But but smart meters are not necessarily in, in, intrinsically dangerous. It's just how close are you mm -hmm. to that danger? To that danger. Yeah. And you simply have to be aware of that case. You know, I, I think about this whole topic. It's very similar, especially when you're trying to get this message across to people. And so many people will just say, ah, you know, they'll look the other way. It's like smoking, you know, right. they'll continue to smoke. They know they've they heard know the message. Yeah, they know. know it's bad, yeah. but, but they, they continue on they until something happens. And then all of a sudden it's like the light bulb goes off and I need yeah. to do this, 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 and this oh, yeah. and this. Right. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I used to smoke cigarettes when I was 16 years old. That was many, many, many years ago. And when I smoked cigarettes, there were advertisements how you're going to be a big man, you're going to be successful, you're going to be this and you're going to be that, right? At that time, which is in the 60s, um, research knew there was a direct link to lung cancer in smoking cigarettes. Direct. And it was well known in the research community. Mm. And then years and years and years and years went by. And what was it, 10, 15 years ago, maybe at most? Uh, it was in the 2000s. They were required to put stickers on cigarettes yeah. to say this is bad. Yeah. Right. You know, why they, you know why they did that? It was because they lost in court. It wasn't because everyone in the smoking industry decided to tell everyone. They lost in court. Um, and that hasn't happened. It hasn't become common knowledge when it went to court because they haven't gone to court. However, very recently, there's been communities, uh, uh, John Kennedy, uh, with ch child, yes. um, child, uh, yes. yeah, yeah. he actually brought the FCC to Supreme court, uh, in appeals and said, you know, that 30 year old standard you used, who are you kidding? It doesn't match what science knows. Right. 
So already now we see um, that there is a pushback in the communities and um, and the FCC didn't do too well in the appeals court. And they they may or may not lose. I don't know. Um, it seemed to be favoring uh, the people. Um, but in the meantime, that will continue going on for years. Right. And like you want to protect your kids. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, exactly. I don't I, I don't really worry so much about me. You know, I, I've only used them for the 10, 15 years that I've been around, but your children are using it every day. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly. the worry. I am having a wow. talk with my 18 year old when I get home today. Well, Daniel, <laughs> we just want to thank you so much for yeah. um just bringing more education and awareness and science to this subject. Um, we really, will definitely really share good information. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I'm going to do some changes tonight. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> get that thing out get of the your It's going. I'm going home right now and doing it. <laughs> <laughs> get it out. Um, but thank you again so much. And we will send people to your website and yes. um, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, oh, well, thank you. you for really appreciate all your hard work in this subject because it I mean I I hear more, you know, there's groups out there that are getting together and they're, you know, rallying against all this. So there's yeah. more awareness now than ever yeah. before, I think. And it's people yes. like you and these groups that are getting the word out and and hopefully, you know, we can Making get change. the word out too and and make changes and it at the very least protect ourselves and our families, right? Yeah. That's the least That's we all can you do. Control. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you well, thank so you much. Again. We really appreciate it. Well, well, thanks so much for inviting me. I, okay. I really did enjoy this. Oh, good. Uh, good. Again, thank you. Good. All right. Well, Take have care. a good rest of your day in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, Daniel. Well, okay, I knew he was going to say all that something stuff. else. I can't believe you have a router in your bedroom. What are you thinking? Yeah, what are you dumb? <laughs> <laughs> He's still there. Uh, He's it's still my there. husband and the <laughs> and and the people who install it. They have yeah, no I'm, concept. Of the I was dangers. in the middle of a podcast, and and the lady was really bright lady, and I was telling you it influences the 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 side of your brain. Yeah. Um, I don't want to hear anymore. I'm going home right now, <laughs> Daniel. I'll keep it's you really posted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call me in two weeks. I will okay. call you in two weeks when I'm sleeping. She will check back. Oh my gosh. Well, again, we've got a lot of stuff to continue on yes. our journey of uh, improving of improving our life quality of our life quality of our lives and our safety and our health exactly. and all the above all of it all of it all right well we hope you enjoyed the show today we have obviously been in extremely um moved by this subject and uh yes. moved to make change so we hope you are too if you've got more um, questions about this or want more information, please visit uh, DefenderShield.com. You can get all of that education and information on products. Yes. And if you've got questions for us here, again, we love your comments. Please write us at RiskyBusiness at CoverageQueens.com and please follow us on our YouTube channel, um, CoverageQueens.com as well. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Talk Bye -bye. to you soon. Bye.